Like the pine trees lining the winding road I got a name I got a name Moving ahead so life won't pass me by Hello there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with a video by request. I was asked recently by several viewers to do a video showing the top fountain pens in my collection. It's been several years since I did a video like that and the list has changed a bit since then. I certainly have more pens from which to choose. Even though the list has changed, the top pen in my collection hasn't. So let's take a look at the top five fountain pens in my collection right now. A couple of years ago, Yoast Applebaum asked me to make a video of my top three fountain pens. And you can see that video by clicking right up here. Two of the pens mentioned in that video are still on my list. It was hard to rank these pens except for the top pen, which has topped my list since the moment I bought it. You can see each of the video reviews I've done of these five pens by clicking the links I'll provide in the description below. Let's start with number five. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I started a fountain pen restoration feature called Pen Resurrection Sunday. In just over a year, I've made 50 videos of pen restorations. Some successful, some not so much. Julie, you're not getting anywhere, are you, Julie? Not the wheel. Julie, you failed. What kind of specialist has broken all your tools? Did you want them to? You're another failure, aren't you, scientist? Scientist? You get nowhere, are you, scientist? How do you feel? He used to use his hands. In those 50 restorations, one pen is my favorite because it has become an everyday writer for me. And that is my 1945 Parker Azure Blue Pearl Vacuumatic. There are several reasons why this is now one of the most treasured fountain pens in my collection. First, it's a Parker Vacuumatic. I've fallen in love with this vintage model Parker which they made between 1933 and 1948. I could go on for hours about the Vacumatic's many excellent qualities, but the skinny is they are durable. This one is 79 years old. They hold a ton of ink. The Vacumatic filling system is easy to use. The celluloid is thick, translucent, and gorgeous. And the 14 karat gold nibs are some of the best I've ever written with. And posted, they are some of the most comfortable and well-balanced pens I've ever experienced. But that's Vacumatics in general. This one rises to the top of the nine Vacumatics I currently own because of how it came from being a dead, broken, and twisted fountain pen to one of the best writers, modern or vintage, I own. The nib was broken, but I was able to grind it into an oblique stub that writes like melted butter on a hot plate. The section was all chewed up by someone hell-bent on getting it off the barrel with a monkey wrench, it seems. But I was able to reshape it into a very cool and smooth custom shape. And finally, the vacuumatic pump was broken, but I replaced it with this modern vacuumatic pump in solid brass. So now it's a supercharged, modern, personally customized, vintage fountain pen that is comfortable, wet, and smooth. And besides, it's blue. I don't get it. What is this? We don't know either. N4. This pen has been at the top of my list and has not been without ink since I got it for Christmas from my wife exactly four years ago. This is my Pilot E95S. It was my very first gold nibbed fountain pen, and I did a follow up review two years later and called it the most underrated gold nibbed fountain pen on the market. It still is. The only knock on this pen is the awful Con40 converter that comes with the pen. Just chuck it in the bin and do what I do. I refill an empty Pilot cartridge with Eroshizuku Kanpeki. If you don't like doing that, Pilot has finally come out with Eroshizuku cartridges. Here's my box of Kanpeki cartridges that I use to supply my wife's E95S. Yes, I bought her one too. I can't recommend this pen highly enough. The nib is so smooth as to defy description and it writes after sitting on my desk for weeks. And the capping and uncapping of this pen is something that is truly sublime and needs to be experienced to appreciate. Number three, I would not have this pen if not for the generosity of Nino Marino, the CEO of Nituno, Delta, 
and Myora. After having the good fortune to interview this brilliant pen designer on Yoast Applebaum's Applebaum Bites YouTube podcast last summer, Nino asked me for my address because he wanted to send me something. I assumed he would provide me with something from his Myora brand to review. When this big orange Delta box arrived, I was literally shaking when I opened it. I see you shiver with anticipation. This big orange and black Delta DV 2.0 premium has a 14 karat gold medium nib, a gold plated 925 silver cap band, and a piston that has a blind cap that removes to access the knob rather than the knob turning from the outside of the pen. This may seem a little odd, but practically what it means is you can keep the piston moving up the barrel as ink is used up to both charge that feed and remove the air, keeping the pen from burping as you go. If you do this with a normal piston, the pen has a gap between the knob and the barrel. This is a very cool feature and I use it all the time. This pen is big and beautiful in my hand and the nib is incredible on the page. I never thought I'd be a fan of black and orange, but this pen is now in constant use. And number two, this is my Leonardo Memento Zero Blue Hawaii. It was my very first Leonardo pen, and even after obtaining eight more Leos, this one is still the best of them. It's the pen that I feature at the beginning of every video, writing ink acquiring minds in J. Urbain Cayenne du Nepal ink. I had Jack Hernandez, my nib guru, cut the broad box steel nib into an architect for me, and it is in use at least once a week. I use it to sign cards and letters because with the Kyanite du Nepal shimmering teal ink and this infinitely expressive nib, it gives my writing a beautiful character. Even up against all my other Leo finishes here, the Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2, Rosewood Ebonite, Stardust, Smeraldo, Prunia, Galaxy Blue, and Salt, the Blue Hawaii is still my favorite. And number one, from the moment I got this pen for my birthday in 2021, this Pelican M800 became the best fountain pen in my entire collection and has stayed there for two and a half years. I have flashier pens in my collection, like my Leonardo MZG in Jonathan Brooks Earth Magic 2 acrylic, or my Waterman Karen in Marine Amber. The Pelican M800 has a more stately look to it in its blue pinstripes. I said in my recent review of the Hongdian N12, which pays some homage to the M800 in size, shape, and function, that it's almost impossible to describe why the Pelican M800 is the perfect fountain pen. Much of my admiration for this pen comes from the visceral response to it, the way it feels in the hand, warm and well-balanced, but mostly from how it improves my handwriting instantly. I've often tried to figure out why my handwriting is better while writing with this pen. In the middle of writing in my daily journal, I'll switch to another pen and then back again. The only thing I've been able to notice is that the 18 karat gold medium nib has a unique grind to it. The nib has a slight stub-like character even though it's not a stub and the line it creates is uniform in thickness north and south. All I can say is that it feels like a stub on the page. Very stable. I haven't felt this on any other pen before or since. So when people ask what I think is the finest fountain pen in the world regardless of price, I never hesitate to say my Pelican M800. It is my only Pelican fountain pen and even though I've tried others like the M200, the M600 and even an M1000, I doubt any fountain pen, Pelican or not, will supplant this one as the finest pen I own. And there you have it. I hope all of you had a lovely holiday and wish you all a very happy new year. Please don't forget to watch my live stream next Saturday, January 6th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, where the topic will be, what is your fountain pen resolution for 2024? And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comments section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, sneak peek unboxing videos, as well as early access to all of my videos the moment I upload them. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. for watching.
And that's all she wrote. I made this. 